All right, we're back to pulling the oil pan here. So I bought one of these PDF manuals online for 35 bucks and it's uh, helpful, but less than descriptive. So step one, one inch drain plug, crack that, drain all the oil out. Um, I had a ton of water come first and then gray sludge, some brown chunks, uh, gross stuff. So anyway, to get this oil pan off, it's quite involved. You have to pull, split the tractor. So let's see what I've done. I've got the uh, transmission is supported and I've got the frame supported up here as well uh, with some big, it was a six by six and then an eight by eight on the other side. Um, I've got this, this hole goes right through, comes out the other side. So I've got a rope through there here and I've rigged this up to welded chain point on the bucket. So that's going to hold that. This whole thing's real loose. I've taken these guys out here. Uh, it says, it seems it says in the manual, just undo stuff loose enough to move it a little bit to get the pan out, but I'm thinking I'm going to need more. You can see how loose this is now. It's full things moving. Um, anyway, there's six bolts that hold the, sorry, I guess the front of the engine here. So two from the engine to this supporting bracket here. So there's uh, one here. And then same on the other side. You can see it right in there. So this guy, and it says undo it till it's flush or just inside. That's what the manual says. So I've cracked that guy. There's another one down there, right in there. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but you get them way back under here. So one there, two there, three over here, four down in here. A little bit tricky. A lot of this stuff I'm putting the box end wrench on and then smacking it with a big chunk of wood. And then you gotta support your pan because it's big heavy cast. And you've got two more bolts in the back. So I've just pulled them out. The bolt comes in from the back side there all the way through. So the bolt goes through there. And then you'll have just exposed nuts here. They're inch and an eighth, big nuts. One there, one on the other side. And then same thing up front here, right uh, there, hard to see. You'll see them, they're inch and an eighth again. So those go right in. So the two on the bottom go into the oil pan. The four above board are going into the block. But we got our fingers crossed that the turbo wrecked the head and we don't have to do the cylinders. So we're just going to try to get this off. Um, I thought this bar was going to be in the way, so I screwed around with it for a long time. Um, I think once I roll this forward, well, I know now it won't be in the way. Uh, and I couldn't get this coupling thing off here, so I cut it. Uh, it had already been broken and welded on an angle, so it was like a V. And then when I was trying to undo it, it wouldn't come undone at all, so I cut it. I'm going to have to get another one of those. It didn't have to be done, but it was broken anyway. The manual also says you don't have to undo your hydraulic hoses here. Um, this one definitely has to be undone. It's too tight. This one's got slack in it. And then it says you don't have to undo the hoses from your radiator. Of course, I've already got that off. And I also had to undo this guy. So this comes out of the bottom of my hydraulic pump there. Um, I think that's what pumps the fluid out to the rest of the tractor. So I had to undo that because there's no way I'm going to have slack on that, uh, contrary to what the manual says. This here is just splined, it looks like, so that's pulled back and that's just going to fall out. Pull right back, I'll put a piece of wood under that to catch it. Um, yeah, so lots of work, everything's loose. I'm going to crack all those bolts underneath around the rim of the pan now. Um, so there's 18 of those little guys. So here, and then there's one way in the back there. So they give you this little channel. You can put an extension on your, sorry, they're not 5 eighths, they're 9 sixteenths. 9 sixteenths short socket, and it just fits in there. So you get the one in there, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight is up front there. I don't know if you can see it, it's up in there. So nine per side, 18 of those, four big bolts, split the whole tractor, support the whole thing. So I'm supported up here on this old piece of telephone pole. 
support it on the frame, support it on the transmission, slid it forward a little bit. Probably gonna have to wiggle room a little bit more, but we're gonna drop the pan. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. All right, pan's out. Um, obviously it's full of crap. So these ones here, you cannot access these until you split the tractor. So the manual, I don't understand how you would do that. I just, like I showed you before, I rigged this up to my bucket, which is supported. Um, this whole thing is just kind of independent. So I took this hydraulic hose off here. You can see how it went back. It didn't have enough room. You'll have to just look at everything on yours. They might be different if hoses have been replaced. This one, there was no way that was going to make. Obviously, you can see it's several, two inches away. Um, so you can see everything split here now. That's the upper and then the lower. So there's two bolts, like I said, going from this front support bracket, we'll call it, or the front frame into the engine block. And then there's two that go into the oil pan. And then the oil pan has two more on the rear. So there's four in the oil pan, four in the block. Um, oh yeah, these fell out. It seemed like one fell out on that side. So these shims, super thin. Let's see, somebody knows if this is standard or what. Really thin little guys, they're like a 32nd or a, I don't even think they're a 16th. So those guys went on here. 64th. And these are where the, uh, 64th. These are the two bolts where it bolts through into the oil pan. So those come through from the front into there. And then here's the back. Those are the two that come through. One, two. I got a nice hunk of junk on here. And then we're looking up at our crank and the bottoms of our pistons. So my next step is to crack these... Uh, I don't even know what they're called. The bottoms of the pistons. The con rods where they hook onto the crank shaft, I guess is what you'd say. And uh, pull the pistons right up and out the top. And get a good look at the cylinder. And uh, like I said, this hydraulic pump is just a spline. So that guy just popped off. Um, yeah, the rigging worked well with these ratchet straps. You can give yourself a little bit of play as you come forward, you can give it a few pumps up. Um, these holes look weird. I guess that's just from years of stress. Anyway, um, I broke one of the squares as well. They got these square blocks around them Spacer. and uh, spacers. And this one here broke into pieces. So I don't know if I can, maybe I can get a machinist there to just cut me a piece of steel and drill a hole through it to the correct dimensions. Um, yeah, so here, we're going to pull those pistons out real quick, hopefully get that done, and uh, add on, finish up this video, and call it a day. Cheers. One more thing we had a concern with is a bent con rod, so we're trying to check uh, piston height, and if you see there on the left, when the piston hits top, top dead center, I guess you'd call it maybe? TDC. TDC. It just, just bumps the ruler up. So it slightly protrudes above. So that would be kind of into the uh, head gasket zone. So we that one's that way, go to the center. Dad, thanks. I'm just turning this over by hand with the shaft that goes to the hydraulic pump again. And see, it's doing the same thing. So they're all really, really close. We've checked them all. I won't get that one on video, but we've been doing this over and over and we're quite happy with the fact that they're not, nothing's way out. More than a, I don't know, very high tolerance. So um, that's probably good news that we don't have a bent con rod, but again, we'll check those um, more precisely once we get them out, if we have to. Okay, pistons out. Um, in here trying to see the pinhole if there is one I'm 
sure this is really not easy to see on You guys are gonna have to go by my word on this. Oh, there, that's decent, I guess. Oh, there we go, focused. Shooting the whole thing with an iPhone. Um, I don't see any pinholes in here. I don't see any reason. Being. And then this is the piston. So, it's got the dip in the top uh, with a little chunk that goes forward. And I'll measure it, and I'll post that. Well, this says C. That's a C on that. The yeah. other two have A. This is what I was talking about earlier. There's an A, and then A. A. Yeah, A on that one as well. So I'm not sure why that's like that. This is the rearmost cylinder. This is the one that had all the issues. Um, it's full of water. Full of water, of course. We're thinking that water came in. When the head lifted. Yeah. When we lifted the head, the water all poured out of the jacket from the head or whatever and flooded into there. Really hard to tell. Um, we got to be done for the night now though. But the pan's off and yeah, I'll keep looking here. Any help would be appreciated if you guys are uh, have a good way of testing this stuff. I wonder if I could pressurize it somehow. I don't even know how I'd see it, but anyway, I guess we'll pull the other two pistons tomorrow. Either way, at this point, we gotta do the rings and that, hoping there's no hole in the jacket. But you guys are saying nine times out of ten, it's a hole. Uh, I'm hoping that because I've got this turbo with this ridiculous set up that that made the head lift and that's why it's blown three head gaskets and that's why we're into this mess and i don't have to pull this block out because i barely have it in me um okay one more thing this engine block there is speculation this isn't the stock engine so i'm trying to see if we can get a thing on here so this is a t6 it's stamped on the other side it's a D5N N6015G. And then there's a number here. Clean that up. This is some sort of a serial number. So that says D371560 star. And then it's a 9C7 on that top little placard up there. And then of course Ford. What's that last? Is that a G or a zero at the end? That's a G at the end. These guys will know the numbers off heart. They can tell. This is a 79 tracker. Is able to look that up on the website. Here's another one over here. This is on the transmission. And that says, I can't read that, but I don't know if that's important. We're looking at the engine. Um, that's stamped into the block. So that'll tell us what it is and I'll have to get some measurements off this piston and figure out what we're dealing with here and whatnot. Cavitation, corrosion, 